welcome to Monday Night Football, where Soccer Town USA comes to you. And also, Chio comes to you again because she is finally back. This I'm is here. not a ghost. Hey. This is not a mirage. It's not a little. <laughs> We're as uh, excited as you are. Yeah. I mean, uh, you've been traveling. I think you were in Nashville this week. I'm glad you didn't fall in the river. Uh, what so, were you doing in Nashville? Uh, exploring the river. Exploring the exploring river. The exploring the river. That, that's the Cumberland River. river. It's a nice river. I think her and a fellow Dalton High girls coach were out there okay. celebrating the birthday. She was exploring the river. We, we found a few rocks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, but let's, uh, Todd. Hey, but before we get too far, I just, uh, on, on behalf of the Monday Night Football crew, I want to wish a speedy recovery to a uh, former Dalton Academy player, uh, Kenny Ranhell, who is uh, having a procedure today. So, Kenny, get well soon. We're thinking about you. Uh, sending thoughts and prayers your way. And really, I know we have uh, Mr. Ruri Alvarez coming on later in the show for, yep. with Tiki Taka Football and Better Better Football Supplements. supplements. And uh, by the but, way, like if you if you're on social media and you haven't seen like if Better Football Supplements has slowly encroached on my Instagram feed. It's like everywhere. their commercials are good. Or those ads are good. They're, they're nice. Good. They're and like there's oh. a lot. Hey, and there's some of you guys that are sponsored out there by them. I've noticed. Yes. Like I'm waiting on my shirt and my sponsorship. Well, Todd, we're retirees, and I don't think it has a benefit for us. So. I am still available, so give me some of the supplements. I'll, can, I'll take it. I'll be an experiment. <laughs> but with that, let's run through the OptiLink scoreboard. We had quite a bit of scores. Uh, Todd, you want to go down this nice, wonderful list? Let's, let's do it with the glare on the board. Hey, Christian Heritage, 4-2 over Mount Zion. Dalton Academy, 10-0 over Dade. Dalton, 3-0 over Cahulla Creek. That was a uh, Soccer City Cup action there. Southeast, 2-1 Ooh. over Northwest. Uh, Juan, we're going to talk about that game a little more in depth. We were there. North Murray loses out to Fannin 4-0. Christian Heritage uh, defeats Ridgeland 3-2. Cahulla Creek drops LFO 6-1. Dalton 2-1 over Woodland. North Murray loses out to Model or Model. Uh, Murray County 3-0 over Rockmart. Dalton Academy 2-0 over Armucci. Girl side. You got it. That was you, girl. <laughs> All right. So we have Murray County uh, beating Gordon Central 4-2. We have Dalton Academy 9-0 against losing, Dade losing, County. Losing Dade County. Losing Dade County. Yeah. Uh, Christian Heritage 1-0 against Mount Zion. Southeast 1-4 against Northwest. That's a good game right there. Uh, North Murray 1 uh, and losing 8 against Fannin. Uh, Dalton tied up with Clark Central. Christian Heritage um, going down uh, one against Richland. Cahulla Creek 3-0 to LFO. Dalton 4-0 against Woodland. North Maury um, going down 10-0 against Model or Model. Uh, Murray County 1-3 against Mark of Rockmar. And Dalton Academy down 0-9 against Armucci. It's the merch. Merch. Hey, so, yeah, we merch. can put you to work while you're here. We, we can't let you, like, you got to do something. Merch. Sorry. So, all right. So there's the scores, and we're, when we get into it, we got um, we're gonna go into the southeast northwest game that had serious implications uh, on, uh, the, on the boys' already. set. Yep, somebody's clinched the cup already. Uh, a little early for that, but I think there was a are. nasty free kick. Yep. In that game on the boys, and I think there was a nasty, and I don't know if you got it on video. Someone was put on skates. Yeah, we, were, we may have a highlight woo! of that. And the crowd went, woo. They but, then, did. but when you watch it on video, it looks even nastier. Like the guy was on tippy toes. Like, oh, yeah. It was a little smooth yeah. criminal action for yes. sure. But, but hey, we got to get ready to go to commercial break because we got to pay those bills. But we come back, Mr. Ruri Alvarez, formula of the fighting Ruri's of Dalton Academy, will be here to talk about Tiki Taka spo Sports. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? Open up a world of possibilities when you sell your home and make those dreams real. At coldwellbanker.com, you can get an instant estimate on your home, compare cost of living city by city, and learn more about our revolutionary seller's assurance program. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. At coldwellbanker.com. Who's up for some football? That's not football, this is football. And Andy, there's one thing that we all can agree on. That's it, North Georgia is the home for new and pre-owned vehicles. And don't forget accessories, parts, service, and collision needs. Claro que si sí se puede. Come see us. Hey, that's our part.
Why should you choose OptiLink Internet? I chose OptiLink because of the great local service. We know computers and OptiLink knows Internet with high-speed symmetrical uploads and downloads. My customers depend on me for safety and security, and I need fast and dependable Internet. That's why I chose OptiLink. Some people say you can't have fast Internet. I say, oh, yes, you can with OptiLink. Experience the difference. Call today, 706-529-1313. I'm Waylon. I live in Dalton and I'm the owner of Elite Lineman Training Institute. And I'm Mitch Sanford with Bitwell Bank. When I left Georgia Power to start my own business, I met with Mitch and told him what we were doing. I told Waylon, you're the kind of business we want to work with. We have a very high standard for how we work as a company and especially how we treat our clients. After a very candid conversation with Mitch, we knew we were on the same page. Today, we're working on several businesses, training and real estate. Because they do the heavy lifting, so I can focus on my business. My bank is Bitwell. Hey, and welcome back to Monday Night Football. Uh, as we, uh, we kind of gave a segue to early in the first segment, we are now joined by Rory Alvarez. You, some of you guys may know him from all different kinds of ways. You may know him from Dalton State College. You may know him from Dalton Academy. You may know him from uh, Tiki Taka. You may know him from Better Football Supplements. But today, he's our special guest. Uh, Rory, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Hey, so let's get started. Like, obviously, you've had quite a road uh, to getting to this point in your life. Let's start from the beginning. Where are you from originally? Like, when did you start playing? Uh, so I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I started playing uh, since I could walk. Um, and then, uh, you know, just playing soccer my whole life got me all the way to Dalton. Uh, played youth soccer. Uh, got to enjoy that. Loved it. Uh, played at Georgia Perimeter, uh, Division One Junior College. Uh, and then played a little stint of pro. For a little bit and then after that uh, I was invited to come out trial for Dalton State um, in 2015 if I'm not mistaken um, fell in love with Dalton uh, love what Dalton is um, as you guys know it's soccer town USA um, just in every corner of the field you always see I got my shirt on underneath you know? right like, yeah so be, you never know when you have to rep on somebody you know they come talking to somebody, back up right got the shirt got to let them know so um, that, that's that's what I love about Dalton the most um, soccer has given me uh, more than what I can ask for. So um, I just fell in love with it. Uh, did my time at Dawn State as a player. Then I got to coach under uh, Coach Safe. Uh, learned a lot from him. Um, you know, uh, the state championship that we were able to, uh, you know, to win, um, a lot has to do with everything I learned from him. So shout out to Coach Safe, shout out to Dawn State. Um, and, you know, now I'm just here today. So going back to when you were a kid, like, I mean, we all had, except for me, I didn't have any idols because I started playing too late. But when you were like, you know, like eight, nine, who was the guy that you looked up to? Who was the, like the man? You're like, I want to play like that dude. So growing up, or uh, right? Uh, growing up, obviously, you know, uh, Mia Ham on the women's side, uh, got to respect yeah. that. Uh, then uh, Martha from Brazil, uh, and then on the men's side. So I did not know much about Maradona, Pele. Yeah. So, but then I mean. I mean, Dino. Dino was the guy. Everybody wanted the 10. Everybody wanted to do the flick, the step over the snake. Um, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, you remember those good times. And so uh, that was my idol. And then uh, Messi came into effect. And then as I started getting older, you know, you remember the Juan Román Riquelmes. You know, they weren't all about speed. but hey, You know what? That, that guy does not get talked about enough. Like low key, just one of the greats. Yes, one of the greats, uh, and another one of my idols. But again, um, soccer is beautiful, where you just uh, you grow to love every single soccer player. And I would like to add, now that you've experienced everything that you have, in soccer, other than soccer itself, have you gained anything else from the sport? Um, in what aspect? I guess you can say friendship. Oh yes, uh, I, that's development. Develop, developments, connections, networking. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, all of it, all of it. I, I owe it all to the game. I owe it all to the game. Uh, you know, because of soccer, I got to uh, make uh, great friends, great connections, like, you know, uh, Rocio, uh, my friends from Dawn State. Um, I actually, you know, uh, met the love of my life at Dawn State. So hey, now, there you go. Yeah, um, so <laughs> so now, like now I got my little one out there. So um, not going to lie to you, I owe it all to, Dawn, to the Dawn area just because it just it gave me a lot. I see you pouring into kids, and, and even before the you, you came about with Tiki Taka, but I see you pouring into kids. Who was pouring into you at a young, at, at a critical time, whenever that may be? Like, how old were you, and, and who was that person for you? So, uh, 
big ups to Patrick Zambito, uh, Italian-American coach that uh, just took care of me. He was my, my soccer father, uh, the best way I can describe it. He would drive from Grayson, Georgia. He would drive an hour and 30 minutes to pick me up, take me to practice, after practice, take me home. So he was fully invested. Uh, he would, again, take care of me, buy me shoes, uh, just taught me simple life skills, uh, you know, where to put your napkin, uh, how to shake hands, yeah. how to be respectful. Uh, it's something that, respectfully, you don't learn in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Sure. And again, I owe it all to him. Um, I love him. If he hopefully gets to watch this, uh, love you, man. And he's still doing it till today. So that's that's what keeps me going. That's the motivation to uh, invest into our players today because what I was blessed to have, I don't think that every single soccer player has at this moment. Throughout your um, journey to to soccer itself, what is some advice that you would tell old Ruri? That's a good one. Oh, that's a good, that's one. A good one. <laughs> Make it a simple one. A simple one. Don't give up on your dreams. Work hard. You never know who's watching. Um, just never give up. Never give up because even when it seems like it's impossible, so many things are possible. All right, so, so let's transition. Like, so from a, a position of where, you know, you're able to have perspective and, you know, people poured into you. Uh, tell us a little bit about your transition to Dalton Academy and what that experience was like coaching their state champion and being to, able to pour into, into those kids. Uh, I, I'm not trying yeah, to be Barbara yeah, Walters. No, here, no, but, no, know. no. And anytime you talk about Dawn Academy, it's, uh, I bring it back to I'm someone because of Dawn Academy. Um, what they brought to my life, uh, it's just the best. Uh, the players that I was able to work with, um, you know, the, the staff, uh, our principal, Dr. Medeiros, uh, Josh Delatt, uh, you know, just that, that group that we had, uh, just a, a big family. Mm -hmm. um, they just, they made me a better coach. They made me a better person. Th they taught me things that I did not know about. And I've been doing this since I could walk, you know what I mean? So um, I just loved it. Um, I miss them every day. Um, I still yeah. see them around town. And at any time I look at that ring, any time that, you know, someone brings up Dawn Academy or the state championship, it just, you know, I, I get the goosebumps. Oh, yeah. Because sure. it was just it was a beautiful memory. And, you know, I, I wish them the best. They're doing, they're doing really amazing right now. Shout out to Coach Griffith, Coach Baza, Coach Lara. Uh, they're doing great things over there. All right. Uh, stay, stay seated. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more with uh, Ruri Alvarez, and we're going to talk about his new venture, Tiki Taka Football Training. Stay with us. We provide an excellent service for individuals who've had catastrophic injury cases. People who've had injuries that are going to last them, unfortunately, for the rest of their life. Being there for a person, being there to actually see them get better, that is what this field is all about. That's what we're really striving to do, and that's what we think we provide. You still have to have that empathy for the person so you can tell their story to the jury. At the end of the day, that's where your case is heard. Has a recent storm damaged the roof of your home? Altman Roofing has been restoring homes since 1984. In Dalton alone, over 2,000 roofs have been replaced by Altman. Altman Roofing will also work with your insurance claim. For a free 15-minute estimate for roofing, siding, or gutters, call 706-529-8136 or visit altmanroofing.com. You can also see their professional work on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you, North Georgia. Gracias, North Georgia. We appreciate you, North Georgia. I'm C. Mark. I'm John Moore. Well, like the Georgia Bulldogs, we're number one. Thank you, North Georgia, for voting us number one six years in a row. If you're hurt and want the best, give us a call. We'll do the rest.
So hi, guys. Welcome back. This is Monday Night Football. We are here with Ruri Alvarez. And on the last part, we were, we were just catching up on him and getting the intro of his story and, you know, where he comes from. Um, but the last thing we talked about was um, Dalton Academy, how you got a state championship, has a ring and everything. But it led into something else, all right? Now we're going to talk about Tikitaka. So what made you or did you ever think about becoming a coach growing up? Personally, no. Uh, the dream was always to play professional soccer. Uh, the dream was always to chase it, uh, chase it as much as I could. Uh, and then I fell in love with just teaching players the right techniques, uh, how to score more, uh, you know, how to open up your body, just little things like that that, again, I learned through Dalton State, uh, you know, at the next level, it's not about how many step overs you can do. It's not about how many flicks, how many mags. It's about being consistent and doing the basics. And so, again, um, little by little, I started falling in love with it. And, you know, now it's what I do. It's my passion. It's everything that I live for because at the end of the day, when these guys go play pro or when they're in college, it, it feels really awesome to know that at some point, you help them with something, whether it was technique, um, you know, following through the ball, uh, ball control, ball mastery, whatever it may be. Um, it's just a beautiful feeling to have at the end when you guys see them on the big stage. For example, uh, you know, the Jamie Mendiolas, um, who else is out there? Uh, uh, Omar Hernandez, you know, all, all the big players. Again, uh, I haven't worked with Omar in the past, but I know that at some point, you know, he worked with Coach Tyler or whoever it may be. Yep. At the end of the day, the coaches had something to do with it, uh, whether it was guidance or just a little bit of coaching. Right. So I, I, I kind of know the answer to this, and but you were all, you've been doing one-on-ones for a while, but transitioning that into a business, was, was that a little scary? Yes, uh, Big time scary, uh, big time scary, because at the end of the day, uh, humbly speaking, you know, it doesn't matter if I was at Long State, doesn't matter if I won a state championship. At the end of the day, uh, the players, uh, the, the parents, they want to have that trust factor. Mm -hmm. How can I trust this coach? Is this coach going to make my son or daughter a better player? Uh, so that was, that was the scary part of it. Uh, but again, you just got to be confident. You got to be confident. You got to trust in your abilities. And, um, you know, the results speak for themselves. Um, there's a lot of players out there that, um, you know, have gone through it, um, whether it was with myself, with uh, Coach Tyler. Uh, you know, back in the day when we were in college, uh, you know, it was it would be the summer. Like, hey, Rosio, do you want to go out and get some touches? Yeah, let's do it. And it's just little things that, you know, later on in the game, she'd be like, hey, we did this. We worked on this. And look, this is exactly what it is. So um, it's just learning. Um, it's honestly just learning. Every day is a new learning day. And you just got to trust and keep going with it. And I was going to ask, um, we did train a lot back in our, you know, former Dalton State times when my prime time, maybe, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I know throughout these years, your coaching styles are where you get those new techniques. What has influenced it to become, I guess, more productive, more better for you? Like, what have you done differently now as a coach? Again, what I've done differently is just working on the basics, uh, just playing on the half turn, opening up your body, playing simple. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be the perfect upper 90 shot. You know, it's like a goal is a goal, whether it's a toe yeah. poke, whether you, it's a tap in, whatever it is. So again, what I like to focus on is mainly the basics and then incorporate a little bit of ball mastery, um, little complex activities, uh, just to get the mind going, um, just to, I guess, show them a different part of the game. Do you, for you, do you enjoy more the, the large group aspect, like team coaching, or do you enjoy the more individual one-on-one? -on -one? I mean, I realize that both have their benefits in terms of like, you know, you want a state championship in one, but like on the other, you get to have those personal one-on-one -on -one moments uh, and, and make that connection with kids. Honestly, I love both parts, uh, but the best part is that one-on-one -on -one for me. Uh, that one-on-one -on -one is just very important because in a group session, you're focusing on eight to ten players. Mm -hmm. So you don't have the time to talk to that player individually. What's going on? What's going through your head? You did great here, but what were you thinking about? on this play. Um, why did you make this decision? So I like that one-on-one -on -one time because you, you get to know the player 
and you get to know exactly what they're thinking and what they're feeling. So once you can tap into their inner emotions and you can talk to them about how they view the game compared to how you view the game, you can get more answers. And I think that that is the best part in order to be productive and get them to understand what you're trying to coach them and teach them at the same time. And I wanted to add as well, whenever you do see your players out there playing, um, do they come back in, to training and do they want that feedback? Well, how do they feel about that? How does it feel for you to see them, the, the mastery that they've done or just anything related to their games? It, it feels amazing. Uh, recently, uh, I'll get a text message. Uh, late at night, I'll get a message on Instagram or whatever it be. Hey, coach, played against a college team today, scored a banger. Uh, hey, coach, uh, remember what we were working on? I did it. Uh, just not too long ago, uh, Ruben Gongora had a beautiful assist. Uh, ball down the right with Don High, crosses it. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think Angel Salias has scored a header. And, you know, I'll, I got the message from Ruben. Hey, man, check it out. Yeah. And, you know, it just, it's that, um, it's that rewarding moment where you're just like, hey, it's working out. It's paying off. So, um, and there's plenty more like that. Yuretsi Pena, uh, you know, she was one of the ones that said, hey, I scored against a college team. And it's beautiful to get that feedback because, you know, she's, she's in high school and she's scoring against a college team. So um, it's just little moments like that that obviously motivate you and keep you going. And just with a little time we have left here, I know you're into another little venture, uh, Better Football Supplements. If you're on social media, I know if you're on Instagram, like you've seen, but just in brief, what, what is Better Football Supplements? Uh, so Better Football Supplements, obviously, uh, we're working with a pre-workout. We're working with... Um with uh, the BCAs and the protein. Um, and I'll be honest with you, it's just some of the best supplements there is out there. Um, it's a little different uh, compared to the other supplements that you're normally taking to are go these, to the gym. These so would you say they're soccer specific? Yes, uh, very soccer specific. Um, again, um, I lost a little bit of weight, as you can see. Um, <laughs> but again, I owe, it, I owe it to better uh, football supplements. And again, it's specifically for soccer players. Um, I would advise everyone to try it out, especially if you like to do CrossFit, if you like to run, um, but it's specifically uh, made for soccer players. Rory, thanks for joining us. Uh, you can find him on social media, Tiki Taka uh, Football, uh, Instagram, follow us. We, we echo and uh, boost a lot of his stuff on there. So uh, stay with us and uh, we'll catch you on the other side. My car looks totally ruined. I don't even know what to do. Locally owned Dalton Collision Center is the only choice when it comes to all of your auto body and refinish needs. Our experienced staff provides quality work from start to finish, will help with your claim, and even assist with getting your rental car. Everything from A to Z. So you can focus on life, we can focus on getting you there. We provide an excellent service for individuals who've had catastrophic injury cases. People who've had injuries that are going to last them, unfortunately, for the rest of their life. Being there for a person, being there to actually see them get better, that is what this field is all about. That's what we're really striving to do, and that's what we think we provide. You still have to have that empathy for the person so you can tell their story to the jury. At the end of the day, that's where your case is heard. This year, Coal Banker Kennard Realty is proudly commemorating our 50th anniversary and what a journey it has been. For five decades, Coal Banker Kennard Realty has been the heartbeat of real estate in Northwest Georgia. We've had the privilege of helping thousands of homeowners with their real estate transactions. Thank you, Dalton and Northwest Georgia. Whether you're buying, selling, or expanding your business, trust the experience that comes with 50 years of excellence. Coal Banker Kennard Realty with offices in Dalton, Calhoun, Cartersville, Ringgold, and Cleveland, Tennessee. <laughs> hey, welcome back to Monday Night Football. If neither one of these guys are going to bring, bring us back, I'll do it. All right, so welcome back. Again, special thank you to uh, Ruri Alvarez for coming on, talking about Tiki Taka football, talking about his soccer journey and about better football supplements. 
Uh, rolling can, I, can, I, can I just say that you're like the next Barbara Walters? You almost made them tear up on Dalton Citywide TV. I didn't want to say national TV because we're not national. But hey, but we're on YouTube. At least That's we know global, we have baby. At least we know he's passionate about this. Yes, okay, we need, we, we need passion. We need passion. Okay, Choke but, it up and, there. but I didn't want to. I mean, I didn't really want to get him into the tears. But, but when you talk about that team and you know that team story, the first year program. We know the emotion that went into that and all the different personal stories that came from that team. And when you're that closely connected, like I imagine that that conjures up some emotions mm-hmm. like, fairly easily. And I think we agree, based on his coaching, that Rory's an emotional guy. Right. So it's, it's, it wouldn't be shocking to me to have a Barbara Walters moment just, I mean, in casual conversation about that. Yes, with him. he's very emotional. <laughs> so let's go. Love you, Rory. Yes, love you, buddy. So... Uh, <laughs> Let's go into some action from last week. We had Soccer City Cup action. Uh, Northwest girls came into the Southeast game with a chance to clinch the cup. Uh, Southeast could play spoiler. Southeast was undefeated coming into this game. But what happens? Uh, well, Southeast dropped an egg. They at least scored in the last two or three minutes. And it, uh, it was Northwest the, came yeah. in. I think Southeast, you, we were there, Todd. I mean, it looked like... Honestly, it looked like Southeast, they weren't, I've seen them play earlier in the year, and I don't think they were playing to their ability of what they played to in the past. Uh, I, I think don't they were know. probably thinking of, like, oh, this is Northwest. It's Northwest, and you got to think about it last year. This is the same point of the year. We're in the same point of the schedule where last year Southeast started up hot and then went cold right. the rest of the year. They did not win a game, maybe one, one or two games. The rest of the season, I'm starting out like eight and one. This year, there were six or seven O going into the game, and now they drop a lost one. They didn't get to play Heritage because it got postponed, so they could be on two L's, but no. So, Northwest runs out 4 1 winners. Uh, they clinch the Soccer City Cup uh, at Southeast. And for me, you know, I look at this game, and Southeast did not play to their potential. Uh, just some mental mistakes, just a few mental errors, and Northwest just punished them. You had goals by uh, Sadie Clark, uh, Yasmin Cortez, and Juliana Harada uh, to finish it off. And uh, I forget who scored the fourth goal, but, yeah, just kind of put it out of reach. And, and the score looked really lopsided in a game that's been really close over the past yeah. two years. And then Southeast, they're uh, starting forward. Um, one of their main goal scorers, Maya Camacho, went out with a – little tweak in the knee. Uh, she didn't go back in. I uh, spoke to her after the game. She said she'd be fine. Uh, just, I guess, precautionary. She didn't go mm-hmm. back. I mean, that made a big difference. I mean, the thing about Northwest girls, they make, you know, they opening up wide. The and Then the they got a girl overlapping or taking that space to feed in. They're feeding in. That's how Sadie scored a couple of goals. And the thing with Southeast is, like, when they're going, I mean, to be honest, I saw Ford, and she's just running but never looking back to so or going to space. It's just I'm sprinting straight into the 18, but I don't really have an idea of what I'm going to do. And, I mean, that was a story. So, I mean, that I, was just for me. I, I don't, well, I don't want to make it out like it was one-sided. This was not a one-sided game, okay? No, Southeast no. had their opportunities. Had their opportunities, The Northwest yes. keeper saved one off her face. There were three, two or three shots off that were post. In, yeah, yeah. inside. So this game could have went differently. But when you're not finishing those those chances, like that, it, that's a well, confidence the first, issue. So the tell two has a – first half could have easily been 1-1. One, one, Two one Southeast, like the the hit off the face. I mean, the, that was an outstanding save. But then the second half, it she just got big. Um, it, it just started chipping away. The girls started losing. Uh, you know, like I, you just tell they just started getting deflated. And I think that's the biggest difference between the boys and the girls. Mm-hmm. Like the the momentum can shift from one minute to the next, especially on the mm-hmm. girls side, because you know. Um, it will shift, and I saw the momentum shift, and the girls were just like, you know. And that, and you see that a lot. It, it's a, an actual thing that you see on the female side, where if they get one goal into their side, they, it's automatically like it's like a negative response instead of a positive one. Joe, and let, let, let's ask you this: uh, You've been playing ball a long time, so these Southeast girls come in undefeated, get deflated against Northwest. How do they bounce back without going into the tailspin they went into last year? I think really what it is, what I should have, what I would think the outcome would be is use that same energy and like I said, negative outcome, positive outcome. You see the boys, they, they could get a, no, a goal behind their net and they're going to use it. They're going to use that energy and hopefully come back even stronger. But it goes back to that. They have things stored in their minds that it's in the past. What can you do now? What are you going to do different? What can you change? Um, 
from this outcome, what are we going to do to like make a, a better um, progression towards our team? Right. So this is a character building moment for it me. It is. It is. And I and I realize that it's easier when it comes to boys. It, it could be an emotional thing. The girls are tending to be more emotional, but they forget that sometimes in a competitive environment, take the emotions away and think rationally. Like, what are we going to do better? This is the, the statistics last year, this year. What is going to change now? So we got an interview with Samantha Lara, Northwest uh, defender, who was a bend but don't break attitude all night, uh, and they did great. We got caught up with her after the game. Let's go to that interview. Hey, this is Todd from Money Not Football. I'm joined by Samantha Lara. Uh, Northwest Whitfield just won the Soccer City Cup by defeating Southeast Whitfield four to one here at Southeast. Samantha, you play center back. Uh, you guys all night. It was uh, you guys kind of bend, but you didn't break, didn't give up the goals. What was it like being on the back line tonight? It was really tough playing against Southeast. We know they're really good players, but we just kept it up. We didn't give up, so we playing our game. You know? Yeah, and you guys, like, win the, the Soccer City Cup two years in a row. Like, what does it mean uh, to you, to your team, to you, to, to be, like, you know, considered the best team in, in the county? It's really special to us. Like, people really doubt us because people just doubt us, but we keep doing it, you know? We just keep playing. So we just win it again, and, you know, we keep winning it. Well, our freshman flip. Well, uh, look, looking forward to the rest of the season. Like, um, what are like? Are you, what's the next game? Who do you guys got? We play Harrison or Harrison Friday, and they're a really good team. So, like, we're just really gonna work like on our passes and stuff like that. Yeah, coach, keep you guys focused. Yes. Is he gonna let you celebrate this too much? Yeah, he will. He'll let you celebrate a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Hey, right, we're going to commercial break. When we come back, uh, we'll have Soccer City Cup, Soccer City Cup standings. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? Open up a world of possibilities when you sell your home and make those dreams real. At ColdwellBanker.com, you can get an instant estimate on your home. Compare cost of living city by city and learn more about our revolutionary seller's assurance program. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. At ColdwellBanker.com. Who's up for some football? That's not football. This is football. And Andy, there's one thing that we all can agree on. That's it. North Georgia is the home for new and pre-owned vehicles. And don't forget accessories, parts, service, and collision needs. Claro que sí se puede. Come see us. Hey, that's our part. Why should you choose OptiLink Internet? I chose OptiLink because of the great local service. We know computers and OptiLink knows internet with high speed symmetrical uploads and downloads. My customers depend on me for safety and security, and I need fast and dependable internet. That's why I chose OptiLink. Some people say you can't have fast internet. I say, oh yes, you can with OptiLink. Experience the difference. Call today, 706-529-1313. I'm Waylon. I live in Dalton, and I'm the owner of Elite Lineman Training Institute. And I'm Mitch Sanford with Bitwell Bank. When I left Georgia Power to start my own business, I met with Mitch and told him what we were doing. I told Waylon, you're the kind of business we want to work with. We have a very high standard for how we work as a company and especially how we treat our clients. After a very candid conversation with Mitch, we knew we were on the same page. Today, we're working on several businesses, training and real estate. Because they do the heavy lifting, so I can focus on my business. My bank is built well. Hey, and welcome back to Monday Night Football. And on the hills of talking Northwest Southeast Girls and Soccer City Cup, let's bring up those Soccer City Cup standings on the girls' side. So crown them once again. Soccer City Cup champions, Northwest Whitfield, Lady Bruins. I predicted that. Well, there it is. Your prediction is true. 3-0-0 with a plus 13 goal differential, <laughs> sitting on a perfect nine points. Uh, so, uh, like you said, that was your predicted outcome. Uh, Dalton and Southeast can still uh, switch places. You know, they're, they're fighting for uh, pride right there. I mean, but a tie of – Dalton knows a goal, goal differential, so a tie does not help Southeast. Yeah, Southeast has got to win. And if Southeast is going to turn it around this year and, and finish like on a hot day, they got to win out. Yeah. Or win that game. That's right. But let's talk about this boys game. It was a little more interesting. Uh, 
if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Juan thinks it's more interesting because Southeast won. Let's, well, let's, let's no, just be was... honest by why he thinks it's more interesting. That girls game, I don't know. No, the girls game that. was good. Like the first, like I said, it's a tell of two halves. First half was one way. Second half, it just started getting away. Uh, just as, you know, like Chill said earlier, the motions maybe, you know, you get yeah. down on yourself. Uh, but the boys game was what we expected it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I- honestly, I think the win did go with a team that should have won the game, which was the okay. boys. I don't, I don't disagree with that. I don't that. think you, you were there. I don't think boys really threatened much until the very last minute when they got the goal. Yeah. Uh, I, I, okay, so I'll just tell you, I was impressed with Southeast to go start out the season 0-4 and, and now to reel off five wins in a row. They look solid. They look like they're a, 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 a unit. They have the same intent. Like, you could just see – like they were really coming together, you know. Whether it was in the in the back with Victor Cordoba in in the he, I thought he had a great game. Oh, oh, uh, oh. Almost had a almost. had a little bit of a gaffe, but you know, with well, less than a minute, we'll let it slide. Uh, but otherwise, he had a great and yeah. all the way up to the front. You know, Hiro like up top, and then Joseph Pena. I mean, what can you say? Uh, he had he had himself a game. Joseph Pena, Hiro. I think the changes, I think uh, they looked – I talked to Coach Garcia before the game out on the sidelines. And he said, we just made some tactical changes. You know, we moved mm-hmm. some defenders down on the, to defense. Uh, we They put Hiro up forward. You were shocked to see him up there. You're mm-hmm. like, wait, when has Hiro been playing forward? I said, they made the change. Uh, they, they're going through the mid. Um, I mean, Pena is playing well. I mean, he, obviously the video, Hiro's – he's actually – Stepped in, and like, I see him taking that leadership role. Like, you can see him after a shot. Yeah. It's like, hey, good shot. Yep. So I think he has stepped into that role where I think it was needed. Uh, and that's real good maturation on his part coming from where, you know, he was. They've had he, several players step yeah, up. Yeah, so he, I mean, it is good. Um, overall, great result. It puts them yeah. on top of the Soccer City Cup standings on the boys' side, which yeah. we'll go over here at the, shortly. Um, but. Yeah, on the on the northwest side, just never really clicked. I thought they had like several chances here and there, definitely later in the game, and maybe it you know if they would have gotten one earlier, uh, it could have made a difference because you know how that pressure starts building. We almost saw it actually happen towards the end of the game, yeah. uh, how that pressure can mount up, but just really just didn't fire on all cylinders early enough in the game to really like change the outcome. I thought. Yeah. And just to add on, when you were bringing up the tactics that the coach did, that's what I was talking about. Like, that's what girls need to do. Like, what are you going to do to make a better outcome come out? Like, maybe put a person in a position that they probably never played, but you know they can be productive. Yeah, sure. So that was was a good idea. But, hey, I know you were able to catch up with uh, Mr. Joseph Pena. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Before we go to the Joseph Pena interview, let's, let's go to why we went to the Joseph Pena interview. So... Can we, uh, can we pull that video up? It's just a short clip. We'll run it through maybe twice. You got to give Clemency a heads up. Here we go. Ooh. Oh. Did you see that? Oh. Can we wow. see that on replay? He Here we go watch. again. Smooth criminal. And he gave him the barbecue chicken right there. Oh, okay. We've seen enough. We've seen, oh, we've seen <laughs> enough. Here's the thing. That wasn't on one play. He was keeping him on skates all night. Not just that defender, like the whole. Yeah. He kept the whole back line of Northwest on, like on their back. The one that stood out for me for uh, Southeast, uh, uh, number five. He had, you know, they're traditional dyeing their hair blonde right now because it's that time of year. But he was made. Uh, he was playing like a little bit of tiki taka football. Like he was. Yeah, just, I remember like, you complimented, you complimented football, him so. during the game. So but let's go to that interview because uh, we got yeah. a couple minutes in the segment. So if we can bring up that interview. Hey, this is Todd with Might Out Football. Uh, I'm here at Southeast High School uh, with uh, Joseph uh, is it Pena. Yeah, that's right. Joseph Pena, who, uh, how many goals do you have tonight? Uh, one, one. One goal. So you danced on that left side all night. Looked like yeah. you were playing some really inspired ball. Uh, what, what was it like over there on the left side? For me, to be honest, I feel like that kid was really good. But I I was just a little bit better. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was close. You guys got out to an early lead. How did you feel like going into halftime? Um, our coach was just hyping us up. It was, for me, it was 2-0-0, zero, zero. The, co- the team confidence. Uh, tell me more. You guys start out a little slow this year, uh, out of the gate, you know, and uh, how has it been the last five games now that you guys have been on this winning streak? Winning streak? Well, coach told us 
we were, we were down. We told them we were not going to be down after zero four, after four losses in a row. But we got the energy back. All right. So thanks for joining us. Uh, good luck the rest of the season. I think. Thank you to Todd and Joseph Pena and putting guys on skates. But let's go yeah, right into and, and, and his little minions that were oh, behind yes. me. Thanks. If you haven't guys. seen the Appreciate soccer that. Uh, Southeast page, let's go to the soccer city cup standings really quick. And this is something we're not used to seeing here. Uh, yeah. well, there that is. means that Southeast Dalton and Classical has big, big implications for the soccer city cup standings. So let's break it down. With a, with a draw, Southeast will win soccer city cup. Or with a win. win. Dalton must win that game to secure a Soccer City Cup. That's, so, so Dalton must win to keep the Soccer City Cup for a third year in a yep. row. Southeast can draw or win. And with that, we're going to commercial break. And we'll see you back in a few minutes. We provide an excellent service for individuals who've had catastrophic injury cases. People who've had injuries that are gonna last them, unfortunately, for the rest of their life. Being there for a person, being there to actually see them get better, that is what this field is all about. That's what we're really striving to do, and that's what we think we provide. You still have to have that empathy for the person so you can tell their story to the jury. At the end of the day, that's where your case is heard. Has a recent storm damaged the roof of your home? Altman Roofing has been restoring homes since 1984. In Dalton alone, over 2,000 roofs have been replaced by Altman. Altman Roofing will also work with your insurance claim. For a free 15-minute estimate for roofing, siding, or gutters, call 706-529-8136 or visit altmanroofing.com. You can also see their professional work on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you, North Georgia. Gracias, North Georgia. We appreciate you, North Georgia. I'm Seymour. I'm John Moore. Like the Georgia Bulldogs, we're number one. Thank you, North Georgia, for voting us number one six years in a row. If you're hurt and want the best, give us a call. We'll do the rest. Monday Night Football, uh, as our former co-host, who's no longer with us, but he's always deep in our heart, you know, we'd always call this the Roy Power Hour, but now with Chio, with this Dalton yes, get up, exactly. I mean, it, it has become the Dalton uh, Chio Power Hour, so Look. Chio, we're going to give this little segment to you. Oh, learn to be a little more subtle, like myself. I wear subtle shades of blue. Does it scream north <laughs> end of the county? No. It's just and like her a, defense, she just came straight from uh, practice at Hammond Creek Middle School, so uh, we'll give her credit. She but, she, we're going to be talking about your alma mater. Todd, what do we got on deck right now? Uh, so, we're going to talk a little bit about Dalton and their clash with um, Cala Creek. Creek. So that was a Soccer City Cup game, which we now know that Dalton had to have. So they run out 3-0 winners. Uh, they get, you know, three uh, plus three goal differential added to that, which we now know is not going to matter because it'll be a winner take all in El Clasico, uh, which is basically a month from now. But yeah, three over Creek. I thought Creek put up a, a good fight, but Dalton was just uh, too much on the day for him. And to be fair, I thought Dalton boys had a really good week. They have a 3-0 win over Color Creek, and then they top it off with a region win um, and they, uh, a comeback win, right? They were down 1-0 to Woodland, and they battled back and went 2-1. It was a good result. Uh, so overall, a really good week for the boys. Yes. Really good week. They keep the momentum going. I mean, obviously, uh, it's still a great season. They're 6-3 and three or 7-3. and three. Here's the thing. We, and we talk about it. They're going to make the playoffs. They will. They're but the they're not going to potentially make it as a one seed, which is their customary spot. 
that there used to be. And we, we talk about the stumbling block that is like the two and three seed. Like that's, it's, it, it gets you on a bad end of a draw and it gets you on the road yeah, real so, fast. I mean, but I mean, they turn it around. Like I said, they got big wins. Uh, the girls also got big win, uh, big win too. Um, they tied Clark Central on Wednesday. Uh, Kahala Creek game was it played. So, right. uh, and now they have also played, uh, and then they came back and played a region win and they're two and on sitting in region right now. Yeah. I mean, it was, a, it, we thought, you know, anybody coming from, Clark County is going to be tough, and it was 1-1. We know there were some circumstances in that game uh, that, you know, it didn't play out. Sounds like Dalton girls probably should could have, should have won that could game. Could have uh, potentially won yeah. it. Uh, the other team had to travel. They got their late. Game was delayed. They were playing on the turf field. Uh, just uh, – and then, really, they had to turn around <laughs> pay less than 24 hours and again. And so uh, – but overall, they you know, it's a, one, it's a tie as a result. Good team. Good – it's good uh, – I guess a experience. building block. Yeah, experience. Building block for the playoffs. Child, how did you uh, view playing a team that was non-region at, with, you know, had very little implications on playoffs versus playing a team that was, you know, like I said, like they had Woodland. And you played Wednesday in kind of a game that didn't matter versus Woodland on Friday that had regional well, implications. Well, they moved it to Thursday. Oh, sorry. On back-to-back nights yeah. like that. So uh, – a game that's back to back with no recovery can affect you. It just depends on like, did you start off with um, intensive, intensive games towards a more you know easy going? I guess I don't want to say easy going, but a little bit less intense. So I would say that this teams that they played against um, that that are coming from down south, they tend to be a little bit more intense, and it it could it could affect the outcome in that region game. So whether it's a good one or a bad one, the potential probably could have always been better. Um, and those outcomes, but I think I'm still not a good fan of having back-to-back games because sure. you're not able to see the full potential of a team. Right. And maybe the previous game feeds into the minds of others, regardless of the results. Yeah, because and, th- and think about it, they didn't play Tuesday, so the game they were originally supposed to play Cahulla Creek, the girls, Dawn girls on Tuesday, right. but then that game just got pushed off because they played the week before, and uh, so that allowed them to play one. So they were already going to play back-to-back game. Mm-hmm. Well, and we know maybe the Creek game wasn't going to be so intense, so he could have played a little more players. Right. But then the Thursday game came was originally supposed to be playing on Friday, but they moved it up because of the weather. And that's why Southeast didn't play because they were playing at Heritage, yeah. and Heritage has. Hey, this no is turf. high school scheduling, right? It's so, high school. And it was just looking at this week. We already got games scheduled this week, but that's another story. You know, I put other, but that's just for another day. But right now, the girls' great result. They're up 2 0 in region. Uh, they're trying to do what's never been done, which they hasn't been done. They'd already, he's already, uh, Alan Dova's already brought them three state region championships. They haven't even done two straight region championships. He's brought them three. This is going trying to make them do four, which I start thinking like you start putting a little dynasty on there. Region? No. It was a different time. time. The last it was time. was a different time, time back then. So <laughs> Northwest for me was a different time too. And, and let's just say it, it goes back. We said it in the previous episodes where we're like, it really has to do with the investment. Yeah. I, everything that's happening now, I'm just like, people think they're like, oh, you know, Chio was good. I'm like, I was all right. Compared to what I see now, I, I'm not going to downgrade myself, but I'm like, for what I see now, sure. humbling, talking, sure. The game and our female sports have increased. They're, yeah. they're really good. So do you say you have a leg like America Quintero? You can talk to her. I mean, That's I think leg. I can do – She let her – ask her. I, you I, can interview I, that. I, I'm just saying. We're asking like, you. I'm asking you. How we do you, can kick. You've seen, you've seen her kicks off the goal line. Maybe when I was in high school, I could probably have done that. But now, let me just say, I don't work out. Okay. I don't – I train. Back when I was in high school, I, I train. But, you know, so – I have like a goal a, now. I have a goal now. Like I said, it, it, you know, we already went over soccer season, but right let, we, we've we also got state standings now, right? Yes, Todd, let's you get said, to those. You said someone uh, sent you yes, the standings. Yes, thank you, Coach Moore, uh, for sending this in. Uh, she uh, she was kind enough to send these to me just yesterday, and we see on the girls' side, the only rank we have is uh, Northwest. Northwest Girls, number eight. Now, Southeast was ranked last week, but with the loss to Northwest, they got knocked out of the top 10. You see Northwest just squeaking in there, eight. And then on the boys' side, we got Dalton, number three, in 5A. Kahula, number eight, in 3A. Dalton Academy, number three, in AD1. And Christian Harris, number eight, in I'm, AD2. I, to be honest, I'm shocked with that number three for Dalton Academy. They're 10 to 1 on the season. Uh, I'm shocked with the Color Creek. I think they're suffering from losses. 
uh, to much bigger schools over the year. Well, uh, I can see Christian Heritage, uh, AD2 is a very, there's not really that many schools. So No, if I, I haven't looked, but I, I guarantee you it's, it's probably Paeta and it's Atlanta International ahead of them. But with that, we're going to go to commercial break and we come back. Uh, we will be back in our final segment of the day. My car looks totally ruined. I don't even know what to do. Locally owned Dalton Collision Center is the only choice when it comes to all of your auto body and refinish needs. Our experienced staff provides quality work from start to finish, will help with your claim, and even assist with getting your rental car. Everything from A to Z. So you can focus on life, we can focus on getting you there. We provide an excellent service for individuals who've had catastrophic injury cases. People who've had injuries that are gonna last them, unfortunately, for the rest of their life. Being there for a person, being there to actually see them get better, that is what this field is all about. That's what we're really striving to do, and that's what we think we provide. You still have to have that empathy for the person so you can tell their story to the jury. At the end of the day, that's where your case is heard. This year, Coal Banker Kennard Realty is proudly commemorating our 50th anniversary and what a journey it has been. For five decades, Coal Banker Kennard Realty has been the heartbeat of real estate in Northwest Georgia. We've had the privilege of helping thousands of homeowners with their real estate transactions. Thank you, Dalton and Northwest Georgia. Whether you're buying, selling, or expanding your business, trust the experience that comes with 50 years of excellence. Coal Banker Kennard Realty with offices in Dalton, Calhoun, Cartersville, Ringgold, and Cleveland, Tennessee. Hey, and welcome back to Monday Night Football. And hey, before we go any further, a uh, big thank you to Brogan Baker for uh, his video earlier from the Southeast game of uh, Joseph uh, Pena putting him on skates. Appreciate you doing that for us. I'm sorry I didn't get you uh, uh, get your cred in the segment, but, but nah. making up for it here. So, and Jill, what you got going before we go to this week's games? What's going on for you this week? I think oh, I will say tomorrow uh, the middle school team is hosting a elementary soccer tournament. Um, wow. It's when we unite all of the elementary schools and get that experience of moving into the middle school. Um, as well, we'll have Dalton State players there. We'll have some high school players there just to encourage the community, you know, come out and hopefully they they get a little bit more comfortable moving into whichever school they decide to at in high school, but it's a good is it, experience. this is the, the city elementary schools? Yes. yes. Awesome. yes. And yes. where's it going to be held at? Fourth uh, and fifth graders, right? Yes. And um, this will be at Heritage Point Complex over there by Park Creek. The tournament will be from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Awesome. And, and we'll see which school. We'll team is one of the most has been City Park. No, not City Park. Park Creek. Park Creek. They took it last With year. With this new rezoning going on, Park oh, Creek will now rezoning be... Rezoning even <laughs> reaching down <laughs> to the depths of With elementary Park school Park Creek now soccer. being rezoned like, uh, to, for TDA. Wow. These could be potential soccer players that eventually oh. would have gone into Dalton High that may be flowing into TDA. I'm just saying, this, yeah. we're putting it, it all affect, out. It will affect the soccer program for sure. Yes. We next, just don't know what the outcomes year, will be. Next year, we're going to have a whole segment dedicated to elementary school soccer every hey, show. Just, hey, we're, hey we're, we're all about providing all the knowledge out here. So it may be uses on us, we're getting another. But we got a busy week of schedule, so let's go ahead and bring that up really quick. Todd, kick it off. Uh, yeah, March 19th, Dalton uh, hosting Pebble, Pebble Brook, North Murray versus Ridgeland, Color Creek at Ringgold, Southeast at Sonoraville, Christian Heritage at Temple, and Northwest ho hosting Central Carrollton. And on March 20th, Dalton Academy at Coosa. That was a, that was a slugfest last year. Murray County this versus This game's got moved Fannin. down. It's got moved since we... Sit this oh, up. that one did? Yes, Murray County. It got moved to... Oh, that is Wednesday now. Murray yes. County Fannin is now Wednesday. No, it was uh, Tuesday now. It's back to Tuesday? It's originally on Wednesday. <laughs> 20th oh is Wednesday. So now it's on Tuesday. On. Sorry, on. next. Moving on. Christian Heritage at Bowden Southeast at, Carroll, at Central Carrollton Northwest versus Heritage 
And on the 22nd, Northwest versus Baylor. Bellar Creek at Bremen. That'll be a big game for them. Dalton Academy at North Murray. Murray County at Harrelson. And Dalton at Hiram. Chio? And for the girls' schedule starting March 19th, tomorrow, we have Dalton at Lambert. We have North Murray versus Richland. Cahulla Creek at Ringle. Southeast at Sonoraville. We have Christian Heritage at Temple, Northwest versus Central Carrollton, Murray County versus Fanning County. March 20th, we have Dalton Academy at Coosa County, as well as March 21st, Christian Heritage at Spo uh, Bowden. Did I say that right? Bowden. Bowden. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Southeast at Central Carrollton, Northwest versus Heritage. March 22nd, Cahulla Creek at Bremen, uh, Dalton Academy at North Murray, Murray County at Har uh, Harlson. Harrelson. Dalton at Hiram. 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 Really big note for me. Two games to stand out really quick. Dalton girls going down to Lambert. Almodova's making a big, like he's just putting some games, stacking games on there. But all he's going to do is make them better. And then another one, Southeast Sonorville boys. I don't know if you recall last year, I think the Sonorville boys beat Southeast. It was either last year or the year before, but Southeast is not fair to over, so there may be a little bit of revenge there. And my big game this week is Creek and ba uh, Creek and uh, Bremen boys. That's a big one. What about you, Chia? Bremen. When I saw Bremen, I was like, well. Okay. Yep. And with that, we thank you for watching this, and we'll see you next week. Peace. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? Open up a world of possibilities when you sell your home and make those dreams real. At coldwellbanker.com, you can get an instant estimate on your home, compare cost of living city by city, and learn more about our revolutionary seller's assurance program. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. At coldwellbanker.com. Who's up for some football? That's not football, this is football. At 80, there's one thing that we all can agree on. That's it. North Georgia is the home for new and pre-owned vehicles. And don't forget accessories, parts, service, and collision needs. Claro que si sí se puede. Come see us. Hey, that's our part. Why should you choose OptiLink Internet? I chose OptiLink because of the great local service. We know computers and OptiLink knows internet with high speed symmetrical uploads and downloads. My customers depend on me for safety and security and I need fast and dependable internet. That's why I chose OptiLink. Some people say you can't have fast internet. I say, oh yes you can with OptiLink. Experience the difference. Call today, 706-529-1313. I'm Waylon. I live in Dalton and I'm the owner of Elite Lineman Training Institute. And I'm Mitch Sanford with Bitwell Bank. When I left Georgia Power to start my own business, I met with Mitch and told him what we were doing. I told Waylon, you're the kind of business we want to work with. We have a very high standard for how we work as a company and especially how we treat our clients. After a very candid conversation with Mitch, we knew we were on the same page. Today, we're working on several businesses, training and real estate. Because they do the heavy lifting, so I can focus on my business, my bank is Bitwell.